Red Reef. Yeah. yeah. That looks like Hanging so This was the one we left off on. Skin turns into Anybody got any? And any kind of language questions? I, I think we'll we'll do these a little bit more. Here's, here's my proposed plan. I'm always a coup is always welcome. So we'll do some more. We'll just possess the rest of these nouns from the first couple chapters of beginning Klingit. Then we will move into introductions and, and that chapter like wasa duasa. But then we'll we'll be able to say like my name is, his or her name is, your name is, I'm this clan, you're that clan, she or he is that clan, they're this clan. So we're going to start looking at how do we change this for persons. And then we're going to just, we're going to look at some eating and cooking verbs and just start thinking about how verbs work. And the way I like to sort of do that is just to sort of, there's three that we're going to really start with. Something's going on right now. Something already went on. Something's going to go on. Those are the three that we're going to look at. And we're going to start to get familiar with those things. And then these two sort of two big components that we tend to change with verbs. But before we dive into that, now that we've got a working <laughs> TV in here, we've got like this really nice big screen TV. Uh, any questions before we move into that stuff? Are we going to have time for you to help us with stuff like downloading the Linkit um, keyboard? And yes. So let's do that right after the break. We'll add that. So we'll do, uh, we'll just, we'll own some more stuff. We'll make it ours. And then we will take a break. And then we'll do, or maybe we'll do that and then we'll do the tech discussion. And then we'll take a break. And then we'll come back in and do the introduction chapter, and if we have time, we'll move into some verb examples. Eating, cooking, and there's different types of cooking. I don't think I have boiling. i got to add boiling. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay. So we left off on uh, Jaji. Dasayakoa. Ow. Yeawa. Shao. Shao. If I'm going to own that, Shao. I need the possessive pronoun first. Shao. 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 Ends with a W. It's going to be a U. Right? Boom. And then it's low, so it's going to be high. I almost heard it. Is that double A thing? Everything gets short. So, from the book of exceptions, <laughs> double A at the end, especially if it's one of these, it's the one that does this thing, it'll end up with A, Y, I. All short, all low. There's just a couple of these kind of fun exceptions. Yeah, you're not going to have one. I mean, I guess maybe if you went and <laughs> hunted, and that kind of becomes yours. Likely it's having a jungle. Up and down. So it ends with a vowel, it's going to get Y I. Ends in a vowel, it's going to get Y. Yes. Ends with a vowel, it's going to get Y. And I'll put that, yeah, I'll put that one chart up that has the rules. So I was wondering, then you don't have two high tones together? Will it go high, low? Well, so that one is high, so it's going to end low. I mean, generally, will you go two high tones? 
All that matters is the last one on the word. Because you could have something, I don't know if I could think of one off the top of my head that had that would have two high tones in a row, perhaps. Uh, but then it would just end low. So it would go high, high, low. Or it would go low, low, high. Possessed, it always switches. Yeah, so you have, yeah, depending on, the only one that matters is the vowel that's right before it. Last vowel in the word. So this one, is a, this isn't the two A's at the end because they're high tone, right? So this isn't, it's not the one that tins, there's no, that's not a verb. This is just a, it's just the word for that thing. So you're not going to get those A-Y-I thing. Are you going to put the Y-I on the end? If you were going to pluralize that, is it, should we do that later or something? Tell me how you think it'd be. Okay, let me tell you. We can combine suffixes. You can have either plural or small and possessive, but the plural or small has to come first. My books. But it goes with the kawut. Oh. Uh, or the short, the shorter version. You go oot. And if I said, hey, yes. can I just take it home? <laughs> it's like, click. Ah. Ach, you go Yeah, So it goes up, down. Zate. Oh, we got a question. How would you say my little tanas? <laughs> So that's a really good question. <laughs> so if you if you're gonna put the isani on there, the spot where there would be the, the possessive suffix is taken. So then you would say achtinach isani. So that you wouldn't have to add that suffix because it's already there. Ach ach Atchach isani, my snacks. Achtech uh, isani, my pebbles. Right, so it would you wouldn't add a suffix if you had isani already on there. Okay, but what if that's my boardwalk or my ladder? I guess it's gotta be the mayor if it's a ladder walk. Can you substitute in a noun instead of a pronoun for that? So instead of saying. Do zeti or so if if the mayor was a dog, <laughs> and then that was became the dog's, or I don't know. Let's say if that was the dog's. Let's say it was his. That was the dog's boardwalk. Cake, zeti. Absolutely, it could it could be. So we say ach zeti, ach zeti. So you could put any noun in the place of ach. You could say Right, you don't have to say And then it could also be Maybe, maybe she has one. Whatever, who knows? But yeah, so any noun could go in that place. 
I guess that's how street works, like whatever day. Yeah, yeah, and, then, and so you'll see this in place names a lot too. Mm -hmm. But in place names, they're a little different because they tend to smash them together because they become a compound word. But you could you could have all kinds of stuff like that. You could have shu iti, the robin's house. Saw. Saw. This is another one. You're not going to change that because it's not the one that's that is not a verb root, right? So we're not going to change the end of that vowel. We're just going to add. I think you would say ach cheeto if it's if you wanted to possess a cheeto. <laughs> and I'd say cheeto ite is that dust you get out of <laughs> But we gotta own this thing. But it belongs to the Dakawidi and the Yeyidi, so it's hastu. But <laughs> E to the D. Ach, 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 Sati ye dach aya. One panins do ish our soon. What a claw aya our soon. What's eek? Ka away play the heen. Nail de awa aus a nook. Ways eek. Cut do dart aya. Ye would nay ye. One panins. Ash has coot a gow. <laughs> My grandma told me one time her dad he was hunting and he shot a bear and it had a little cub so he brought it home and then they used to and it, it stayed around them a lot and they used to wrestle with it and stuff it'd scratch up their uh, not real bad, but it would just, they would like play fight, right? And then it would scratch their arms up a little bit. And when it got big, it just left. So. But how would you possess it? I see it on the screen. So there's that K to the G, low to high. I don't think I. Ah, uh, yeah. Right, that's going to have to push it low because that single vowel, here's another one from the Book of Exceptions. <laughs> single high vowel will push long and low. This is why. Uh, Plus k becomes taku. Uh, That's where taku comes from. Is it double A then? Yes, double A. Okay, I don't think I finished them. All. I don't know if they'll be written. So it's just two A's, or has an I at the end? Yeah, that should be T apostrophe T A Y high tone up. First A is Nope. And so if if a word ends with a short high vowel and you put a suffix on it, it will push it long and low. Just like a little king salmon would be It would be pushed long and low. 
but ta ye is high, isn't no. it? Ah ye. The last ta ye. Right. Ta is high tone. So once you put that suffix on there, it'll push it long. And so this is the thing with like the, the tone and the length. No high tone on that. Why we sort of just keep talking about them because they, they change, they're flexible. And we see they, they move and they move regularly. And some of the places they move is on word endings when you put a suffix on there. That'll happen. And just like, uh, so we say, nadak uh, ka. So ka is a high tone short vowel. But if you say, you'd say, nadak ka de. So when you put de on there, it pushes it long and low. This, it's a pretty consistent thing. It's something that you'll see, and you'll see it in a few other sort of places, where if you do something, it'll alter that vowel. But it does so in, in pretty regular ways. The most common way is a short high thing becomes a long low thing. It just happens sometimes. Tzatzi. Tzatzi. That's E. That's E. Was mine? Ach, that's E. Ye. Yeah. So we're going to put Y, I on the end. It'll be low tone. Who never has an open ending with the Y? Ye. Cut. 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 Quit. 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 And you have to have context for this one because you would say ach kwati. However, you need to make sure you're giving it context like we're talking about like food or something because this is a think it euphemism for a pair of male body parts. Good to know. Uh, just, you know. <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's other words for them, but that's one way you can say it. It's just anatomy. <laughs> Does it get modified, though? Quatty. So you're going to add a, an I, a low tone I at the end. Quatty. A low. Is it the same, with the same uh, pinch mark? Yes, because the, there's no pinched voice consonant, so it cannot, it will not change. None of the pinched vowels will ever change. It or goes consonant, sorry. a T to a D? Nope, because there's the apostrophe. Oh. Right, so that you can't make a, there's no, you can't make that sound. There's no pinched D. So that, that apostrophe means it's locked. C-H apostrophe, I'll stay the same. D, the, you know, K apostrophe, it'll stay the same. So you just uh, add an I. Yep. That's all you do. Just add an I at the end. Quati. Quati. What's that do a sock? Zisk. If it's mine. Ach, zisk. Yeah. I have an answer. Ach, zisk. So that W just becomes a U, right? All of these, any of these, uh, especially like the, the pinch type of thing with the W at the end, that'll just become a U. So it's How come you don't add a U to that W? Because you can't go zisk U. This ooh, it's just too, it's just too awkward, and so same with like um, and so a lot of times too, if you put something after it, you'll hear it become a u. Yeah. Like a lot of people will say this and it'll become a u because it's just, it just happens, and so, but that one, yeah. So anything like a x apostrophe w or Gahu. That'll just become ah gahu. It'll just turn that that will turn into the U. Is that W? Koots. 
Goed. Goed. Ach. Goedzie. Goedzie. Then we see the high to low, T S D Z. That's why they say um. D Z. Hintakudzi. is a polar bear. That's why it becomes Hudzi. Quasta, quasta, So it's high tone, so it's not going to change. Quasta, ye, why I then? Quasta, ye. Gah, 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 gah. If it's yours, gah, gah, gah. That W just becomes a U. Okay, so we'll do more of these. We'll do more of these. I do want to have sort of a technology conversation about um, adding things to. Uh, you know, so if if you want to be able to uh, work in Thingit on different devices, right? So the first thing is maybe if you have a, this is going to be hard. I kind of like having this guide here. So the first thing is, are you dealing with a Mac or a PC? Because if you want to add a Thingit keyboard, uh, and, and I think there'll be a day, maybe five years from now, where it'll just be installed in these machines. So, it, but that takes a lot of, um, yeah, it takes pressure. I know that Cherokee was able to do it because they have a language department and a very large tribe, and it's a very large language department because I was reading this article and they said, the IT department in the language department, and I was like, oh, wow, <laughs> must be nice. Uh, however, so if we come here, let's see if I can drive. I can't even read this thing. So under clinkitlanguage.com, I don't know where my mouse is. This can be impossible. Oh, let's go down. So if you go to the home page, well, I guess it doesn't matter where you go. Under resources, and I kind of put it under print and web, um, which I guess we can kind of review a couple of things uh, that are also in here. So here is where I tend to put uh, some larger files. There's a bunch of books in here until I get in trouble and people make me take them off. Uh, but the beginning Clinkit workbook is here. If you would like a PDF copy of it, you can always download it there. Um, I do have another version. Uh, the only difference is there's one page removed, so you can get the sort of two pages, just like the book is open, because otherwise I think it doesn't quite work out. Uh, there is a, a Clinkit dictionary, which is in progress. Maybe in a year it'll be kind of ready. Uh, there's some sound practice, I think slides and videos. Uh, that one? Oh, there's a beginning Clinkit slideshow. So when we do that sort of sound practice and stuff, sort of uh, what we did a week ago, two weeks ago, uh, that's up there. So if you want to teach it to people, you can, you can use that. There's the diction Dictionary of Clinkit by uh, Kaki Shawu, the Clinkit Verb Dictionary by Nash Story, or Story of Nash. There's the Interior Clinkit Dictionary by Jeff Lear. There's Clinkit Chinachsa by uh, the Dowen Howers and John Marks. Clinkit uh, Chinachach, that's only the, the uh, insert in the CD. I've got the sound file, so I'll. I'll 
work on putting those up there at some point. Just the way beginning materials. Uh, so when you go to resources and print and web, it's just there you start with beginning materials and intermediate and advanced. Then I think of more than you might ever want to know. Weather cards. Uh, some weather cards, the place names that are in the Thornton book. Uh, uh, the Clinket Math Book by Catherine Mills. Uh, a set of lesson plans that were done in the interior a few years ago. And then we get into the intermediate materials. You have uh, how yeah, I have actually, I uh, a list of adjectives and adverbs, a list of body parts and plant parts and land parts, a uh, verb conjugation slideshow, uh, intermediate clinket, what it was in 2012, when it was passed along uh, to me, and it became how because the concepts were changing and there was a bunch of content added. Uh, 575 clinket verbs, uh, the continuing verb documentation. So if you're, for some reason, lose that website that has all the verbs conjugated for you, it's there. Uh, the Verbal Structure Handbook by Zeosh, which is going to be super handy. Uh, we'll start talking about that in, in a couple weeks, probably. Uh, the Jeff Lear, the Elizabeth Nyman and Jeff Lear book is on there. Also, under here, at some point soon, I'll put, it was retyped in the Dauenhauer orthography by Simuk, David Russell Jensen, Du Kuji Yinade, which was the first book that Dick and Nora put out. Uh, and then under advanced materials, there's a bunch of verb stuff on there. There's uh, Carrie's uh, dissertation, there's these Clinket seminars and other papers by James Crippen. There's also some papers by Seth Cable. And this, it's under advanced because it's getting into some pretty highly theoretical and technical stuff. I lost my little mouse pointer. Which way does, which way gets over there? Okay. Uh, okay. And then we come down towards, and then, uh, Jeff Lear's dissertation, uh, the stem list and clinket verb notes, which are kind of towards the bottom of the advanced section, are super handy. They are really amazing. But I, I put them under there because it's kind of like, if you don't know how to look at it, you just kind of you can get a little lost. Although the clinket verbs, the one that says notes in parentheses, is probably easier to access. And it's something where you can just look through it and you'll just see, whoa, there's a verb for that, a verb for that. This verb has all these different, you could change it to create all these different types of meanings and uses. Um, and then there's, there's some texts by uh, Seth Cable. And then we go down and we get uh, just some additional. So here's, here's uh, the Clinket clan map that was done by Clinkett readers. It says Andrew Hope III, but I just give him credit there because he, he gave me permission to, to use it for language learning. He's like, I want this to be available. That was um, while he was still alive. And then there's the Crippen Clinkett keyboard, the Northwest Coast keyboards. Uh, those are two things that will help you to put this technology onto your device. Uh, so if you have a Mac, an Apple computer, you would install the Crippen keyboard. That allows you to type high tones and the combined diacritics, like a G with a built-in underline, a K with a built-in underline, an X with a built-in underline, and also an apostrophe that is a character, not punctuation. Uh, the difference between that is if you have a word and you double click it to copy and paste, if you had the punctuation one, it's not going to grab that apostrophe at the end. This one, it looks the same, but there are certain fonts that it'll kind of freak your computer. It'll just, it won't freak it out. It'll just look like a box with an X in the middle. 
Uh, so the other thing is when we start typing with these what we call combined diacritics is we find there's certain fonts that just work great. Um, uh, Brill is a really nice clean font. You can get just do an internet search for Brill fonts. B-R. B-R-I-L-L. It's Alatino. a really pretty font and it does it does nice things with the underlines. The underline tends to go underneath the swoop of the G mm. uh, but if you want to publish something in Brill you have to pay them, but otherwise it's, you don't have to pay them. But other ones that usually just come on computers these days, Times New Roman does okay. There's a font I think called Cambria, which does pretty good. Uh, just, but just try them out and see which ones work. Have some underlined G's and X's in there. Palatino. What's that? Palatino. Palatino. Yeah, Palatino. And so something that looks good and also um, is not too, like, but then, you know, you might use them for other things. And sometimes you want to have kind of a more decorative font or a comic book font. But then you're going to have to do some kind of doctoring. Um, but I prefer working with a font that just accepts everything. Um, I don't see it on here, but just in the last year, chirp on your phone. Yeah, yeah. So there's not a link on here. Uh, but maybe I should put one on there. But it'll walk you through how to put it on your phone really easily. Yeah, because because the, the thing with this, with the Crippen keyboard, when you click that, it's going to download a little file. And then you're going to double click that file to unzip it. There'll be three things in a folder. And there's there's a bit of, uh, it's, it's a bit of a process. So what you've got to do is you've got to, and I can't really, I'm not going to be able to navigate this on that screen. But I can, I can show you the process maybe once we get the, the regular screen sort of running. Uh, but basically, you're going to put it into a specific location, which is listed here. So you're going to have to go to the main hard drive of your Macintosh, of your Mac computer, and then put it into the library under keyboards. And then you've got to go in and sort of activate it, which is kind of, it's a bit of a process. Uh, you know, we can certainly... If you wanted to bring your computer here, or, or if you wanted to uh, call me during the office hours, I could certainly help walk you through it. If you have a PC, then you would click on that Language Geek link, and then it would bring you to the Language Geek website, and they have a computer that you can add to a PC. Similar to the Crippen keyboard, there's kind of a few steps you've got to follow, uh, but they do list those steps. But I know some people, once you start like digging around in files and getting into the preferences or the control panel, it can get a little, it can get a little murky and it can get murky fast. Mm -hmm. But uh, these, these keyboards will allow you to do that. The difference between these two keyboards, the Crippen keyboard, you're going to hold down the Alt key. And basically, if you have another keyboard uh, on the top right of your computer, You'll, you can activate a little area so you can change keyboard. So I can change mine to Hawaiian if I want to type in Hawaiian, and then I could change it back to, you just leave it on the Crippen keyboard. But what you're going to do is you'll hold down the Alt key, and while holding down the Alt key, if you type a, a vowel, it'll be a high tone vowel. If you type a G, K, or X, it'll have the underline on it. Uh, if you type, I think, a zero then you're going to get that zero marker that we use. And if you type, that's probably enough. There's, there's, a, there's a bunch of other cool things for linguistics, uh, but that's probably enough. With the Language Geek, the Northwest Coast keyboard they have, uh, basically, once you activate that keyboard, everything's pretty much the same. But what you'll do, the two things that are different is the semicolon and the forward slash. A forward slash will put a tone mark on the character before it, so you type A forward slash. It puts a tone mark on there. The, col the semicolon will put an underline on the character before it. So you'll type a G and then the, then the semicolon, then it'll come before. And then I think you push, you hold down like control, there's control or alt or something to actually get a semicolon. So if you're a big semicolon user, you might have to, you know, remember the shortcut for that. Uh, but those are the two keyboards. If you have 
an iOS device like an iPad or a um, iPhone, you would go to the App Store and look for a, an application called Chert Keyboard. What? Chert. C H E R T. Chert. And when you have the Chert uh, keyboard, uh, you could type in all Alaska native languages. So if you got your buddies are uh, Inupiaq and you want to tease them, you could do that, you know, or, or communicate. I guess not always teasing. Sometimes it is. Uh, but then with that one, uh, once you activate it, you can switch your keyboards uh, on your phone or your, or your tablet. Uh, by pushing the little global button or whatever it is. And if you hold down on that button, it'll give you your options. Mm -hmm. So like if you have a Hawaiian keyboard and the chert keyboard and the, the standard sort of US keyboard, then you could switch between them. To get the underlying characters, you'll hold down on like a G, K, or X, and a little window will pop up, and you could pick one. To put the tone mark, uh, there's a little thing to the le right of the space bar, and that'll put the tone mark on a vowel. If you have a, an Android, I don't know of anything that'll help you out yet. I heard that they're working on it, um, but you could also set up what's called keyboard shortcuts, and it's different for different kinds of devices. But usually there's a screen that says keyboard shortcuts, and what you would do is you would say, when I type XH, I want it to suggest the underline X. And so then when you're typing on your phone, when you type XH, it'll give you an option. Sometimes it'll just substitute it by itself. But the trick with doing it that way is if you were going to spell uh, a word like Kah, which is a merganser, you would have to type K A A space, x, h, space, and then I would convert that x to an underline x. Then you'd have to go back to the beginning of it and backspace to reattach it to the word. So it's kind of a slow, it takes a little getting used to. That's how we used to text in Tlingit before the chert keyboard came out. Uh, and it, it'll, it'll do the job. The only thing is the g, h, when you, when you set that up, you have to go G, H, H, or else if you try to type ghost, it'll say ghost, right? <laughs> With chert, what about high tones? For high tones, uh, just to the right of the space bar, there's a little, it looks like a slash mark, but that's actually the tone mark. So you'll type A and then hit the tone. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't have the chert keyboard, usually if you just hold down on the vowel, you'll get a few different options. Um, but they're not tone marks. They are. In chert? Not in chert. Uh-huh, right. Yeah. That's right. They're in. The other thing you have in chert, uh, in the Crippen keyboard, the Crippen keyboard, if you hold the Alt key down and push Y, you're going to get the Y with the two I's over it, uh, the two dots. And you're going to get that in the chert keyboard by holding down on the Y. What did you say? Yeah, linguistic. Marketers. Yeah. It's not the Tlingit also. We, no, we, we use it in Tlingit nowadays because they use that sound in Tesla. Like we say, Gaidanak. They say, Gingdanak. It's really fun. They, they use it regularly. That sound is alive and well in Baisling. I'm, I'm not getting the tone mark. Say it again, what you said. So just to the to the right of the keyboard, so you should be able to type the letter A, and then what looks like a forward slash to the right of the space bar. When you type that, the, the tone mark should pop up on that A. But let's take let's take a uh, second break. I'm back at a quarter till. Oh, I never no. They do the underline. The tech stuff is almost as exhausting as the grammar stuff. Right? Yeah. So now that we've done technology, let's take a break. We'll come back to hardcore grammar. That's so cool. I'm just kidding. I never knew that. You hold it down, like you said, and then you mm -hmm. can get it. It's more about the individual. I'm from here. I went to college here. Da 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 da. And then, um, what's. Shetzin. 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 Shetzin
said that she in the old days. Formerly, you didn't introduce yourself. Other people would introduce you. Or something. Yeah. So. Well, just, so maybe when we're and I would just uh, again, it would yeah. Well, we'll start. Yeah. So that's a really great question. Um, so I think an introduction is something we all learn how to do now. Then I would just click on that. And, and it's an introduction through the Tlingit language. It's not like this is the official Tlingit introduction. Right? Okay. But there was this sort of thing that happened, I would say, over the past 10 to 15 years, where standing up and introducing yourself in Tlingit became a thing. Ooh. And that thing is really the, the symbolic representation of the language learner. So this is this is what I saw, and this is what I learned how to do. Is let's say so and so was going to introduce himself, and they would stand up, and you would stand up and say these things, and because it's also a series of things that you just sort of learn. I'm this clan. This is my is my mom. This is my dad. I'm from. This is my house. And so, I would say, as far as in the, the context of cultural events, there's no place to to do that. I don't think. I don't think it's inappropriate, but I think if we just got in our Tlingit time machine and we said, you know, oh, good day, and we went back to the future, then we would probably see that people didn't do that. But it could be the case where we're hosting something and then we invite someone up to talk and we want to say who they are before they come up. The other ways that it's used is if I'm uh, and we're at some function, and this is totally theoretical, it's fictional, but if the Dakshawadi said, oh yeah, he's our grandchild, and he knows this story of ours, we're going to ask him to tell it. Then I might stand up and utilize these, because what, what we call it is we call it, um, the way that I've heard it explained, they'll say, i'idekakwanik akshakunda. I'm going to tell you about my ancestry. And then I would talk about I might say that because there are Kaguantan people here. And I say, I'm a child of the Kaguantan, and this is how it happened. Uh, if I go to Klakwan, I'll always acknowledge Kaguantan and Dukhtawidi. So, that's the bigger part, is when you're acknowledging those clan relatives of yours. Mm. But we learn how to do this because sometimes in the, in the conversation, someone will say, who are you? Who's your people? Mm -hmm. And so it's more, and it's just kind of getting to know each other too. So there was, uh, was, was talking about this the other day, Ishmael Hope, was, I think Shuwatin Martha Van Heel was probably the last and she passed away last year, or maybe it was this, this year. She was the last person that we knew of, uh, and maybe there's others, who were cl pretty close to monolingual. Like, uh, and I know some elders, like they're more comfortable speaking Tlingit than English, but this was the one where like, she hardly spoke any English. Cool. But she used to come down and sell moccasins with Ida Kalmigan, and uh, and she would never talk. Ida would do all the talking. It was usually a negotiation. <laughs> uh, and I was working in this art gallery, and they would come to this gallery. It was owned by my friend, uh, Terry Williams. And one day, I walked into the car, and I said, And she just started, boom, the floodgates opened. And she started talking. So much and so fast, because she was really excited to talk, that I had to just, like, I remember I had to make my body just completely still so I could try and follow everything, because this is probably 15 years ago. And, uh, and she said, I, you know, I was born here, I'm young lady, but I was born here, and my dad grew up here, then we migrated up here, and then this is where I was raised, and, and, and so that's the kind of stuff that you do tell people about where I was born, where I was raised, who my parents were, where they're from. That is stuff that you talk about. But it's more in the context of a conversation, not a public presentation, if that makes sense. And that, it's not like you're violating something, but 
it is, it is something that I've seen. And then I've, I've also seen like, and I've even made like, here's a template. And so I made a template, but the template has lots of options. It's just like, and I just found another one, which was really cool. Are those on, said, on the website you showed us? Are those on, on there? Maybe I'll put it up there. there. I'll put it up there tonight. And I gotta make. I gotta add one thing because you could say, "Ye hit ye duck." I never heard that one before. From inside the Raven House. Oh. So you could say, "Blank hit ye duck." From inside that house. Uh, and then we say, uh, "I." Oh, Dagan says, "I sent her." Heather Evoy's info for the linguistic emergency. Yay. So hooray. Yeah, okay. So we're going to shift to back to the beginning thingits. Uh, and I said the introduction part, but it's actually like just learning how to talk about yourself and this other stuff. So we're not going to practice and perform introduction. Uh, we're going to go through this stuff and how it's working grammatically with the idea of saying, uh, now I could say, my name is, your name is, his or her name is. Because this is where you can say, you know, my mom, my dad, who's that per what's that person's name? You know, and so this is all just sort of trying to give us more tools in the toolbox. So we've just done, uh, we did a lot of ach for my. So I say ach, <laughs> I could say Achit. I don't know who brought me a calendar, but there's my little boy. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would say, if this is Dasayayata, Gukha. Gukha. If you're from the Yakta people aren't here, they say Chashka. They don't say Gukha. For them, a Gukha is a. Because a Gukha is also the name of a ladle. Ladle? Ladle. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that other language. Or a ladle. Ladle. That's how my grandpa said. No, just... <laughs> but for you know, for most every other thing gets gukha. And some say gukwa, and you'll hear sometimes there's a kwa in a bunch of different, in a few different words. So if this is mine, I would say dasa. Gukha <laughs> ye. It's all short, and it goes high, low, low. But if this was yours, and it's not because it's got my coffee in it, but if this was yours, or e, 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 and if it's hers, whoever's, she's right there. Do, right? Do gukhayi, right? So this is, we go, ah, e, do, ah, e, do, ah, e, do. And this do has nothing to do with verbs, right? This, well, it's not quite true. But. So, because a lot of people would say, like, um, they would just throw it in there, like they'd say "chat yak a, e yak a, do yak a," and that is not "do yak a." Okay. So the next step in here is learning some object pronouns. But before we get to these, we're going to show. I'm going to show you how the ji wu part works. So if I say "gukha ach ji wu," how does that translate? I have. I have. I have a gukha, right? So let's do a little uh, around the world thing. We've got a lot of folks in here. But just, it could be something you actually have. And th there's a couple things we should say about this phrase. One, it's verbless. It's, it's not a verb. Two, it doesn't always work. Sometimes it parallels with English because you're like, yeah, I have some time, right? I have this, I have. Oh. English uses this for a lot of things, right? I have bad hair. <laughs> 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 That's for example. I have, you know, 
I, I, have a, I have a headache, right? So you use it for lots of things in English. It does not work the same. It also, you would have to use a verb if you wanted to use like I had, I'm going to have, then it's going to change a little bit. But what you have, when you say ach, ji, wu, there are three parts to that. Possessive pronoun, mine. This relational term, G, it's not, it's related to Jin, but it's not. G is possession. That it just means possession. And in, in that way it's similar to English. Because I could say I have a car. That doesn't mean I take it everywhere I go. Right? So it's it's a possession. It's not holding anything. The w part is a locational suffix. It's the exact same one when you say gu su, ya du, we du. Because you could also say ne su or ne su. Right? This follows the, another rule. So what, what we learned when we learned how to possess things is, oh, hold on, let me make sure that I, so when we learned how to possess things, we learned that a, a vowel suffix is the opposite of the tone before. This is the same case. That's why you say ya du, ji wu, ne su. Okay? And it's not used for a whole lot of things. It's just for a verbless thing. It's, it's located there, right? So that was a, it was a big concept thing. So what we're going to do is you can just pick a noun, and it doesn't matter what noun you pick. It's just practicing a phrase. But, so if I say, dasai ji wu, what am I asking you? What do you have? And how would you answer that? He nach ji wu. Yeah, oh, what? Yeah, oh, what? So let me scroll this. It's so hard. I can't read. I can't see it. I don't know where my pointer is. Okay. There it is. So there's, there's the structure, okay? So I'm going to ask everybody what you have and just pick something, okay? Okay. ジーウ。ジーウ。ジーウ。ジーウ。ジーウ。ジーウ。ジーウ。ジーウ。ジーウ。ジーウ。ジーウ。ジーウ。ジーウ。ジーウ。ジーウ。ジーウ。ジーウ
Kuhita Achiwo. Kash A Dasa E Jiwo. Lenoxiat Achiwo. Eh, Yaktushi Dasa E Jiwo. Akha Achiwo. Eh. Yede Kuka Dasa E Jiwo. Ayakaje Achiwo. Yach Dasa E Jiwo. Douche Achiwo. Okay. I think I got everybody. So then Dasa. Dasa e jiwu. Ak ak jiwu. Yek eh. Kekuzi shawat wa ek sha. Okay. Okay. So then the the sort of round the the other thing we could do with this is you could do a drill, which uh, we're not gonna do. We'll do it in in beginning thing it would do a lot more drilling, but this is something you could practice. If you got three people you could always practice pronouns, right? Or you could just go in groups of threes to do the exercise. Everybody has a different thing. And if I said dasa, uh, let's say, well, let's just get an example. So I have katecha, 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 katecha. One that twists on it. So that's what I have, uh, and then you have Kuhida, and you had Saves. Okay, so if I'm talking to you and I say Dasa Achjiwu, then I could say Dasa Ijiwu, and for that's for you, Sate. Achjiwu, Dasa Dujiwu, Kuhida Dujiwu, right? So what we're listening for is if you if you hear that ach, then you look at what I have and you answer with i. And if you hear i, you look at what you have and you answer with ach. And if you hear du, then the answer is du, right? So the, these are the things that we start to focus on, right? Same thing, talking about myself, talking about you, talking about this other person. One, two, three. And we're going to start looking at these things. And then, you know, you could pluralize these things too, but we just start with the sort of singular. Dasa achjiwu, dasa ijiwu, dasa dujiwu, katecha ijiwu, seit achjiwu, kuhida dujiwu, right? And so we're just sort of matching the pronoun. Right? So if I'm asking about me, then you answer with you. If I'm asking about you, you answer with me. If I'm asking about him or her, you answer with him or her. It's just aligning those pronouns. And that's what this drill practices. This is something you can, and this is something you can do in small groups uh, with folks that you're teaching to help just sort of reinforce the concept. Because what you're learning here is just which is the right pronoun to use. And so the other things you could do is uh, take turns and everybody name a body part. So ach, and then and then i, and then du. And those are other things. And then you can, this will extend also to clan relationships and kinship. So this is, then kinship is really important because then uh, it's important to know how you're related to people through the clinket way of knowing. But it's also, you know, ach tla aweh. My mother, her father was born in Haines, but he grew up in Skagway and he went to school in Skagway. So these are these are the things. This is how you get conversational. People talk about relatives. Fam oh, you know, you can get the good juicy gossip if that's where you're going. How? Yeah, get. We on Kanigi. Yeah, we. Do huch away, do not good. Yuck, eh? Which, you know, maybe. If you hear the juicy news in town, uh, <laughs> yeah, it 
doesn't always have to be. It could always be good things too, right? Like, hey, so and so had a baby. You know, all this other stuff. But this is where you're gonna get how that first, second, third person stuff works. Uh, let's see. So the other thing that's a good point. Whenever when we start learning this stuff. Uh, and some people make fun of us for it, which is fine. We learn an artificial form of Klingit. This is the way you learn every language. If you learn a second language, you usually do this like big whole language stuff, right? Because then you'll say, uh, what's your name? My name is Lance, right? But in conversation, it would sound very different. But what we're doing is we're building patterns. We build those patterns deliberately and then by speaking more, listening more, using it with fluent speakers, you learn how to sort of trim. You do a lot of cutting. We also, we take the high tones higher than most speakers do. We kind of, we go <sighs> kind of big and loud. When, when you listen to fluent speakers, it's not, it's pretty subtle. But the idea is we go bigger than usual because then you can sort of, because it's, it's kind of new stuff. Right, the, the vowels and, and other things like that. Is there not time today to do that where we try the third, the three? We each try the three. Maybe we'll do it on Tuesday, but we're going to force some of those things so that we'll have, and we'll just, we'll pick three things and we'll just. Because it does, we've got, we've got a lot of people, which is great. Um, but then, uh, because we could do that one, and then also the name, get into the names. Ooh, Are we supposed to do something when it beeps? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, dasa achji wu, then iji wu. Dasa duji wu. Do ji wu, right? Oops, I mean, ji wu, right? So the other thing is learning this question particle, ge. So what does the ge do? Makes it a question. A question. Yes or no question. Yes, it makes it makes things into a yes or no question. It could attach to a whole bunch of different things, right? Because I could say yak e ge. Is it okay? Is it good? Uh, and then this is interesting though because where it goes is after, right after the thing that we're asking about, right? So we tend to sort of put it on the end because we might think of like a question mark, right? So we might say, heen iji wu ge. We should say, heen ge iji wu. Because we're asking, we're not asking like, the, the focus is on the water, right? It's on that water. Dana ge eji wu, es ach ji, right? So the other thing, so the ge puts things into a yes or no question. It can combine with other things, right? So aya and awe could become akya, akwe. That is the ge popping in there, turning into a k because it's getting contracted. That's what's being put in there. Is it this? Is it that? Right? The other thing to remember, that wu suffix that's on here, akji wu, that means it is there. So you don't say kesh akji wu, you just say, Kesh ach ji. I don't have it. Kesh dana ach ji. Kesh heen ach ji. Ha. Kesh ach ji kuhida. The, the word order could change a little bit, right? It's totally fine. It's flexible. That one's flexible. The other thing is, so this pattern can also reveal itself. Because I could say, uh, let's say there was a person here uh, named Susie, and uh, we took a break. Susie never came back, 
And an ex Gusu Susie. So if she was there, you might say, Way do hu. Way do hu. Right? So there's that hu pronoun. Way do hu. Way do hu. Way do hu. Way do hu. But if, if uh, you want to say, She's not here. Does anybody know how to say it? Hey, Susie. Yeah. What's the negative form of Yadu? So, Yadu Hu. Kesh Yat Hu. Kesh Yat Hu. Kesh yat hu. So if you're in like some meeting or something that's in Klingit and we do start with the roll call and we could call out your name and you could say Kesh yat chat and we'd all laugh. <laughs> but that, that we see that uh drops off because it, it can't, logically it can't not be there. It, it's just that w means it's there. It's it's only used in a couple different places. But this achji wu kesh achji achji wu kesh achji achji wu kesh achji. Right? Everybody alright? It's like so we can also start pairing this with some of the, so we saw dasa, and that's asking what? So adusa is asking who, right? So you could also say adusa kahwe du jiwu, who has coffee? Adusa dana du jiwu, who has money? Adusa ta du jiwu, who has king salmon? And so this there's a bunch of things you could ask about, like maybe I'm looking for something. There's some specific thing I need and I need to know who has it. Or if we're just sort of doing like an exercise, who has these because then we'll see how many we need to give out, right? So what this starts showing you is just pattern building. Where's the blank? Learn how to fill in the blank. Because what beginning think it's going to do towards the end and say, hey, let's have multiple blanks. Blank, 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 right? So then you would have uh, down here, blank, blank. So you get the two blanks. So what we tend to do is show you what should go in each one. The noun, duchiwu, the name, right? Kahwe duchiwu kone. So it's the same. Kahwe duchiwu kone. Kaya kaje du ji wu suzi. So it's the same th that noun goes first, right? So it's the same pattern, but then you're just adding a name at the end. So that we can, once we learn how to do some of these patterns, we could learn how to do that stuff too. So I could say, Kastakate ye du sak akla. My mother's name is. So then at the end of this chapter, we get our first verb. Like as we go through beginning Klingit, we haven't even looked at, a, I mean, there's a couple, I guess we said like wasa'iyati, khatyake, but then we just sort of get one where we start changing the subject. So this, when we get into a subject in Klingit, so we said, khat wa eh hu. Everybody say, khat wa eh hu. 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 Ach i du. Ach i du. Ach i du. Ach i du. So what we did is we had me, you, him, or her. Then we have mine, yours, his or hers. The next step is the subject of a verb. 
So the subject of a verb is who is doing this verb? I'm doing it, you're doing it, she or he is doing it. So what we find with, with thinget, so let's say the verb is talking. So the pattern for clinket grammar is that say, I'm talking, you're talking, talking. There's no pronoun for the third person. No pronoun. You just straight say the verb. Okay. For all verbs? All verbs. <laughs> there is no third person subject pronoun. No, we are doing this. You can say we. But that's, that's also. We'll get to the plurals. That's the first time. We're just doing, we're just doing singulars right now. Verb. And, uh, to just sort of let you peek into the bag where the cats are. We're not letting them out of the bag. There's a lot, there's a lot more pronouns, right? There's like, people do it. There's, there's the, this guy that we've been talking about or this gal that we've been talking about. So, but we're, we'll get into those. We, do, we deal with those later. We do them in these sets because it's sort of like a manageable set when we feel like we've kind of got that, we start introducing the others. Right? What is the uh, I'm and you, I'm talking, you're talking, and just the talking? She or he is talking. Okay. So in English, I'd say, um, well, let's just do the see it verb. Okay. Right? So I'd say, in English, I'd say, I see it, you see it, she sees it. I'd say, chatin, iyatin, ayatin. And you hear ayatin. Yeah. There's no subject pronoun in there. That's what I was wondering. Right. So for a, a, an easier example would be sleeping. To be sleeping right now. Chata, ita, ta. So there's nothing there, right? So there's nothing there. So this is just something we've got to get used to with Thinget. That third person for she or he is doing it. And this is important because when, when we tell stories, and not big like... Raven stories, but just like, oh yeah, this funny thing happened to so and so, right? And then you could tell the story. Okay. So some people say, and it happens in a lot of languages, that the, the third person singular, he or she or it, is not marked. There's no marker on it for person. It's just bare. But, but you called it a subject pronoun? Yeah. So there isn't a subject pronoun. The third. For the third person. Mm -hmm. The one you're talking about. Yep. So it'd be I do it, you do it, does it. Just a, straight to the verb. Okay. So the the other thing that tends that happens with Tlingit is the pronouns are built into the verb and if they're there they cannot go away okay they cannot go away so that's different than english because english might be he sees her then i'd say susie sees jimmy so those pronouns he and she went away if we took it one step towards being thinking grammar, Susie, she, sees, him, Jimmy. So we'd just keep, we'd keep those pronouns in there. Because in Tlingit, they do not go away. To make it a little more Tlingit, we'd say Susie, him, she, sees, Jimmy. So the other thing is it must go object, subject, verb. Okay, so the, the subject does it, it's done to the object, right? So we're going to get these, this list of pronouns and this other list of pronouns, and this is the order they go in. And so we're going we're gonna to sort of start walking through these, and the first thing we do is we just do a simple, like, to see something, right? So let's say uh, we're down by Sitka, which is the Shingit name. 
uh, that uh, colonizers decided to call Gastineau Channel, whoever Gastineau is. Uh, Seatka is what that place is called. Seatka. 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 Seat is a channel or a, a gully, and then ka is on, on the channel. So if we're out at that place called Seat Ka, uh, kind of on the beach maybe, Nij Kakoe Ohan, Akaya Dasoe Keet, Yak E. If I see that, those killer whales, I might say Keet Ha Teen, Keet Ha Teen, Keet Ha Teen, it's low. Oh, I mean, sorry, it's low and long. Yeah, and then it's long and high. So long and low, then long and high. Chatin, chatin. I see it, right? I see it. So the other thing that this shows you is down in the bottom right. It'll show you what kinds of things are in there. When we first start dealing with beginning Tlingit, we might just say, might not even talk about it. But as we go a little bit farther in Tlingit, if we see Khatin, we go over into this, this box shows you the translation, then this box shows you what, what's in there. So we have zero, which is the object, that's the it, or the her, or the him. It could be any of them. Be any of those things. Then we're going to get the ch. That's me. I am doing it. That's the I part. We're going to get the ya. That's the. What do you think that is? Classifier. Then you're going to get teen, which is the root, which is seeing, right? It's I see. That's grammatically how it works. So if I said kit ha teen, the information that's being presented, killer whale, it, I, see. Okay? That's the order that it has to go in. So then, if I'm happy to see my grandparents out there in the channel, the killer whales, and I might ask you if you see it, kit get ye teen. Keet get e a 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 teen. So there's the get, the yes or no, because it's referring to the killer whales. E a teen. You see it. But the parts there, the zero for the it, the i for you doing it, and then yatin. Is the that's how the verb is put together. And we'll talk later about why is the classifier a certain way. Um, but for now, kit get e a teen. Kit get e a teen. Why is there a zero after ge, ge, before i? It's the object. But the object is kit, no? Right. It is kit. But for tlingit. For, for English, I would say, do you see it? Do you see the killer whale? But for Tlingit, that it cannot go away. So if I were to speak up with step one of Tlingit grammar, I'd say, do you see it, the killer whale? If I were to speak step two to Tlingit grammar, killer whale, do, I don't even know how to do that, but it would basically go, it you see. So they have to stay in there. They can't go away. Too many cats. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a couple, a couple of little cats running around. Can you just um, clarify object and subject? Like what an object is and what a subject is? Yeah. A subject does the verb, right? Mouse ate the cheese. Who ate it? Mouse. Who got eaten? Cheese. Okay, so cheese is an object, mouse is a subject, right? That's at, at the base level, that's, that's, a, that's what it is, right? Object is the 
it's done to. Yep. The object is the recipient of the verb. The subject does the verb. Okay. So like if I say, saw you walking down the street. <laughs> right? it sounds creepy, right? Yes. I am. You are the object. I am the subject. I saw you, right? You saw me. Now I'm the object. You're the subject. So the order on this is the zero marker at the beginning is the object. Yes. Okay, and then the subject is buried in there. Yeah. Yes. It always has to go object, subject, verb, object, subject, verb. And so as we sort of, right now we just sort of, we say it's there. If it doesn't make sense, it's okay. I just want you to know that it's there. But later, you'll be able to say, uh, Barney yuck, like Barney, I love you, you love me, right? Ich sechen, chat isachan. right? And then we'll learn how to change those things too, right? So I knew some people, and then they've been studying Tlingit for a while, and we're all in a group, and this one person left and turned around and said, Ich sechen, to a group of us. And I was just teasing, I said, which one? Because it better be me, right? Because <laughs> you would say, I love all y'all. I love y'all, right? And so this is where the pronouns unlock a lot of language use for us. But they, they function in a pretty specific way in Tlingit. But just remember, there's an, the thing that gets the verb, the thing that does the verb, then the verb. And then there's these lists to pick from. And so that's one thing that we're going to practice. So, but as we go through beginning Klingit, we don't go crazy on them. We just sort of say they're there. And then we'll, we'll switch to an object, and you'll start to recognize what kind of pronoun it is. When I say, uh, you chut do a sock, the chut is an, I'm an object there. Right? Do you have a question? The subject is keyed. The object is the object because it, it gets seen. The object receives the verb because you you could say tan ayatina we wekit, but you have to do like once you start getting to into like the killer whale sees the sea lion, mm -hmm. sea lion sees the killer whale. You got to do a little bit more work to sort of start specifying. But in this sentence, it's. Once you say khatin, I'm the one who does it. Kit ge eatin is so he was clar clarifying that the op uh, the um, zero with the slash is for the subject. <coughs> you. There's a lot of just third person objects, right? And, and we'll see that as we go along. And we'll sort of look at examples. But what we do after this, once we get to ayatin and khatin and iyatin, is we sort of look at them and say, you don't have to understand everything that's going on there. Right? You just need to know khatin, iyatin, khatin, iyatin, and this back and forth. Do you see it? I see it. What do you see? Asa iyatin, hit khatin. What do you see? I see a house. Dasa iatin cake, khatin, and then you can start using this. You could just walk around, and this is just another small phrase to use. I see a dog. I see a house, and that, and one is you're just sort of drilling this khatin, and then you're also just seeing how many things you could name, and so you could do this at Fred Meyer. And you say, ha, shutai khatin. I see bacon. Kanata uh, khatin, I see blueberries. And then, and then what we do is we do, we'll just shift. So next week, we'll shift and we'll just start using a few objects. And then the objects, we're going to say, like, this is what I'm called. And I'll end up being an object. That's maybe it. That's enough. <laughs> it does make sense. There'll be a point a month or two from now. We'll be like, oh yeah, I totally get that. But just once we start, build, we're building this Tlingit structure in our mind, and it takes a little bit of navigating, 
And I think what happens is the English brain is like, don't, <laughs> because it, it likes its space. Okay, finish cheese. Who's in charge of the language summit at Swiss?